Welcome back. Um, as you know, PTAC will issue a report to the Secretary of Health and Human Services that will describe our key findings from this public meeting. Uh, we now have time for the committee to reflect on what we've learned and heard today from our sessions. Uh, we'll hear from more experts tomorrow, but wanted to take some time this afternoon to gather our thoughts before adjourning for the day. Uh, committee members, please find the potential topics for deliberation document that's stuck in the left pocket of your binder to indicate that you have a comment. Please flip your name tent up or Josh, since you're on Zoom, to raise your hand. Um, I'm going to start out with a couple of comments that I hope will do nothing but stimulate the uh, PTAC members to have some more discussion. So I think it was a robust day today with a lot of a lot of great subject matter experts, a lot of information ranging from very high level concepts down to very granular things that uh, we need to think about. Um, as I was listening, I started jotting down just little notes of things that, that I heard, uh, mostly at a very high level. These are, this is an undeveloped list of topics that is clearly incomplete and each one of these needs to be unpacked and developed. But I thought these were just things that I wanted to be able to get on the table. Um, so the first thing that I heard is that from a healthcare standpoint that we have had limited transition to becoming a high performing industry for multiple reasons. And I think that kind of sets the stage for all the other discussions in terms of how we perform and, and how we measure ourselves. Uh, we heard about uh, making sure we had a clear purpose for measures. And we heard John Bulger talk about the various uh, buckets that he thought about when he thought about purposes for these measurements. Uh, we heard uh, discussions about developing a portfolio of measurements, but with an intent to move towards outcomes with no fixed reason to have measures in each bucket. Uh, using process measures only to test theories about whether certain processes contributed to outcomes uh, or if it had a clear link to an outcome. Uh, we talked a lot about uh, person-centered outcomes and patient-reported uh, outcomes and the need to develop those. We talked about developing CMS-level measures that were cas that could cascade to an entity level and then very specific measures that could also then cascade to individual physicians depending on their particular specialty. We heard about the expense of all of these measures, both in the development, the implementation, the measurement, uh, and how expensive it was to do that. But at the same time, heard discussions about how many more measures we needed, uh, particularly in the specialist uh, area. And so there was a little bit of a contrarian discussion there of uh, the expense, but needing more of them. <clears throat> um, we heard the need of developing measures for social determinants of health and equity, uh, and that our equity uh, uh, had was persistent and, and or worsening uh, and that we needed to include some form of risk stratification as we look at those measures. Um, we also heard about uh, defining what populations we were talking about in total cost of care and making sure we understood how we were defining those populations. Uh, we heard a need for being more comfortable with thinking about uh, these outcomes from a long-term planning standpoint and not short-term. Um, moving away from claims, um, we heard some discussion about shifting to big dot measures away from micro measures, and we continue to hear the, the call for needing an all-payer model to help with those efficiencies and alignments of the docs. So I'm going to stop there and look to my PTAC members for comments and discussion further. I've had a big mouth all day. I may as well keep going. I love it. Uh, um, what did I hear? A lot of what you, what you said, Angelo. I think I heard we need conversations and collaborations so we can have harmonizations. And we can't keep, 
I mean, so many people are working so hard in their little spaces. And we heard champions who work really, really hard and spent years of their lives working in this process, but they're working in this silo and the next one's working in that silo. And we need multi-payer solutions. We need to harmonize all this work some way. That was probably my biggest takeaway today. Um, secondly, we need investment. We need investment. And um, I, I think Dana had a great little slide there where she had a square that said the incentives have to be more than what the doctor's making from their fee-for-service. So again, like we've heard so many times, we need to make fee-for-service less appealing and we need to invest into, into this. Um, and then the other thing that I heard over and over again today was that it's the entity that bears the risk. It's the entity that creates the measures um, and the providers are not at financial risk. They are incentivized uh, to meet those, those measures. So those are my big three takeaways. Right, thank you for those comments. Jen, you're always good at summarizing things. I'm looking at you flipping through your notes. So uh, <laughs> I'll put you on the spot. <laughs> I'm not quite to 10 yet. I uh -huh. haven't been that organized. Uh -huh. uh, same, same comments, not well organized, but I thought we had some fabulous speakers uh, that it was interesting, both the diversity of topics that we touched and yet the same themes that kept coming up uh, despite uh, the various uh, focus that we asked our panels to diversify on, um, which I think is... Uh, reassuring that we know the challenges and yet uh, is disheartening to hear that for over a decade we've been focusing in this space and have made some improvement, uh, but not the improvements that we want. What I heard was that the downward pressure of financial risk has uh, actually eroded outcomes and trust and exacerbated inequities. And I think we all know that to be true, and it's unfortunate, and I can't think of any other reason why we need to be more focused in this space uh, and have a louder cry for change than that, because that's the exact unintended consequence of what we were trying to alleviate. Uh, and then I heard a potential solution that said that total cost of care should be laser focused on equity. And yet we heard, uh, you know, challenges around methodology and how to do that. Um, but I think it might even be valuable for this group to think about future sessions that are completely dedicated to getting in the weeds around definitions of equity, um, methodology, risk adjustment, what different subpopulations look like. And, and it, we keep bumping up against this challenge around who's responsible for care and what systems can better coordinate, who again are all focused on an outcome of improving uh, health, but uh, this, this discrimination between health and uh, healthcare I thought was such an important one, obvious but yet important in that space. Uh, I also heard, uh, and it's interesting because again in my day job we talk a lot about this around um, basements and balconies, and the basement being around safety, uh, uh, eliminating avoidable harm, uh, and the call out from our first panel around uh, focusing more on safety measures, and what are those increments of care that if not done, we know will result in harm. And again, I'll give an example that just recently came up because as we were talking about behavioral health, um, Again, in my day job, when we talked to our psychiatrist and asked them, what do you think you should be evaluated on? They said, we order these medications that we know uh, patients are supposed to have annual lab checks to make sure that there's not an impact on liver function, for instance. Um, we try to do it. We don't know if we're doing a good job. We probably aren't doing a good job. That's just one example of, again, without getting into micro details, 
um, but if there are many examples of safety metrics um, and maybe rather than uh, just thinking about improvement work, um, thinking about how safety folds in. Uh, and that leads me then to, uh, I thought Dr. Bulger's comments were a good rubric for thinking about what types of measures do we need? Uh, what he threw out were measures for improvement, measures for accountability, which could include safety and could include appropriateness and could include reporting and measures for payment. And that maybe they could all be different and should be different. And I thought that was compelling. And then last, uh, again, we gave our uh, panelists an opportunity to, to talk about uh, what they thought was necessary for success. Um, I use the word mandatory to prompt you know, their thoughts, but we keep hearing about multi-payer alignment. We keep hearing about, uh, I'll put it in soft quotes, mandatory participation in programs that has a deliberate glide path with an appropriate timeline for engagement, evaluation of current performance, and then to do the work of improving performance, which is a long time, uh, in addition to components that to do that, care coordination is important. And again, that focus on equity is important. Great, thank you. I need you to do a good summary. Jim. Oh, yes, thanks. Um, I was I was reflecting um, when Tom Seekers was talking that I knew him 20 years ago when I went up to Mass General for one of my uh, early fellowships in equity. And I was telling Jen at the break that when Baylor Healthcare System decided it was going to consolidate with Scott and White, they disbanded the equity department that I ran because uh, after, there are, after our second annual disparity report, not because we had resolved the disparities, uh, but because it was not, um, a, there was not a financial incentive and it appears that we're still in the same kind of circumstances today that um, there's not actual maybe alignment with equity reimburse, reimbursement for improving health equity at a level that would make a, um, a significant move of integrated delivery networks move toward the equity door to try to figure this out. It is shocking, honestly, to listen to um, Ma, is it May, Ma, Dr. Ma, speak about equity research at the level she was speaking at it around. And it, it, she had advanced, they had advanced the ball in 20, 20 years a little. <laughs> and that is how we think about um, health equity and health disparities. So it's, it's discouraging. And I think uh, channeling a little bit about Larry, and we see this in kind of 20 year blocks of time we now, and I think one of the comments that came up was that, um, and I forgot the doctor's name uh, from the University of Chicago was powerful to me, was um, we need to redouble our investment because this is a long journey and we are stewards, right? We're just stewarding at this time. And so we should advocate for more funding. Um, for research budgets um, for the next generation of clinical scholars, but also for the health equity deep diving that's still yet to be done. I thought, um, I took away, um, something that really kind of struck me was the multiple speakers talked a little bit about gaming the system. I, I was a little bit struck by that. Like that was a resonating like people kept hitting the bell is as if they were listening to the other person and say, Hey, don't forget that people are gaming the system. So I thought that was, I thought that was very interesting. I also thought that, um, that the points around structure process to outcomes, you know, were, was a fascinating um, reminder uh, from Tom. Um, and, um, and so in pulling, pulling it all together, I, I, I thought that um, um, it was um, Dr. Schneider that really kind of rang my bell around this notion of, of providers and um, patients losing trust. And so I, I talked to him offline and I said, well, would you think 
there would be a possibility that we should try to figure out how to create a trustworthiness metric for systems and providers rather than implying that there's something wrong with the patient. The patient's only responding to a system that they perceive as either trustworthy or not trustworthy. And just as easily as they could believe it's not trustworthy, they could just as easily believe it was trustworthy depending on the features of that system. And I think there are lots of systems, I think Tom is like illustrating that at Mass General and Brigham, they're trying to, they're trying to accomplish that and trying to focus on that. So I, um, I think that, that um, this notion of system trustworthiness um, that protects the public and advocates for uh, both um, health equity at the individual and at the community level. Because I do believe that there's an interplay. Um, and I think that we might just have, we may not be able to influence the community level metrics, but we can advocate for them um, because that's our, our charge as providers is to stand in the gap for the community uh, and represent the community's healthcare needs. So, um, I, excellent provider um, speakers. And so that's kind of what I wanted to um, cont contribute today. Great, thank you. Great comments. Lee? I think um, I'm going to go with uh, what Jen said last, which for me is the catchphrase of the day is glide path. And we heard multiple people talk about um, there's just a prevailing confusion in many areas around the complexity of the metrics, around the trouble to implement, and the data problems around um, who the providers of a given service are and metrics that are defined for a given provider, but yet in a different community, there are different providers that, than, than who the measure was designed for, around the purpose of the data, and we're drowning in data that doesn't have much insight or wisdom to be able to bring to it. And I heard multiple speakers and multiple types of discussions plead essentially for a clear multi-year roadmap because it's a journey. So many incentive programs are built, you know, it's a one-year metric. You can't even get a dashboard built in a big system in a year. You just have to know where you're going and be able to, even in, even if it's not external investment, it's internal investment and time and expertise and leadership focus and attention. So if there's a role that, you know, CMMI or CMS can bring to this, I think we heard a pretty clear call, a clearing call for a clear roadmap pointing at least directionality, if not exact stations in the train journey. Um, I appreciate that multiple speakers brought up just managing, managing the work life and always keeping that focus of, of, of the quality and the aspect of the caregivers, which is in many specialties have gotten pretty, pretty poor. Um, I appreciated Dr. Galis's um, specific example about, you know, spending $220,000 building a single analytics package and dashboard for a single measure for a small single specialty group. And so there's very significant investment in getting this stuff, stuff done. And that certainly resonates with my professional experience as well. Um, I heard multiple people speak about, uh, Equity, and that certainly was a theme that carried through most of the conversations, but I was struck that we simultaneously need essentially equity at a large scale and even standardized measures like the ADI to apply to populations, yet that if that's all you have, you still have to do the nitty-gritty work patient by patient by patient to know what you can impact in your community, and that was pretty evocative. Um, and lastly, I really appreciated responses to this question about what's the, the question was, what's the mixture of quality outcome, patient experience, process, utilization measures for measuring system transformation. And I, I heard the structure of the answers was slightly different, and I thought it was interesting. And in the categories that people spoke to um, was a portfolio of measures, first of all, will will not be the same because every locality has you know, different culture, different streaks, different weaknesses, different blend of specialties, et cetera. But a portfolio would include, above all, outcome measures. And next, decreasing influence of process measures with this idea that they seem to reduce um, the lock-in inefficient practice, right? Um, that's that's unless they're tied closely to outcomes. Then, then emphasizing equity, 
then emphasizing appropriateness of care, both reducing low value care and increasing high value care, then ideas of access to care, great evocative uh, example of you know getting a specialty referral and all the specialists in your community are scheduling out one year. I think that happens all over the country all the time. Um, I know it's true in my community. Um, and then some measures of churn, and that was interesting to me that spoke to that that idea of percent of a provider or a specialty or a group's population that churns gets at cherry picking, gets at satisfaction, gets at culture of trust between patient and clinician, all kind of simultaneously in one measure. And that was sort of interesting to me. Great. Thank you for all that, William. Walter. Yeah, this was a great day. Um, very informative and rich discussion. I'm just going to pick up on uh, some of the themes that Lee and Jim just mentioned. Um, this whole idea of having a balanced portfolio of measures, I think, uh, was thought-provoking. You know, I, I think all of our um, experts agreed that kind of you got to measure total cost of care in, in a total cost of care system, which, which makes sense. But kind of the the kind of balancing measures of uh, what was mentioned um, when I asked that question uh, were very intuitive answers like access, uh, care integration, like how, how do we measure integrated care, uh, which I thought was um, quite uh, relevant, especially given our total cost of care uh, meeting last year. Um, safety and then the whole idea of churn, which I thought was a, a really uh, insightful concept to me that I hadn't thought much about before. Um, but, uh, you know, if you kind of fit what um, the first session panelists mentioned on the balance but full of measures into the um, HCP lands framework of measures, uh, the big dot uh, framework that uh, Dana mentioned, you know, I, I think um, you know, the, the big dots were like lower costs, better care, and better health, right? And, you know, I, w one of the clear themes that ran through pretty much every conversation we had this morning was how overwhelming the amount of measures out there are, the measure of cacophony and um, just extreme burden. Uh, and I think there is a lot of wisdom to, at, at least at this level, the CMS level, focus on the big dots, right? Um, and I think Kind of the big dots or some of the um, balanced portfolio measures that, that I just mentioned. Uh, the other thing that I um, kind of took away was uh, applying the uh, big dots to different populations might actually result in very different measures. Um, for instance, even in the same program, let's just take um, the MSSP ACO, for example. If the population of patients in an MSPACO is kind of community dwelling, relatively young, relatively healthy, that um, the big dots might remain the same, but the level two and level three uh, quality measures might look very different uh, in another MSPACO that focused just on nursing home patients, like the one I belong to. Um, and so, kind of thinking through at what level do we uh, recommend, uh, make recommendations uh, about the measures. I, I think it's probably at the big dot level, but when applied to different populations, the level two and level three sub dots uh, might look very different, even in, in the same um, uh, risk-bearing value-based program. Perfect. Thank you. Uh-huh. Um, Proms. We we need to include proms in whatever report we're we're generating out of this because we heard that over and over and over again, the complexity and in, in capturing them, their importance, how they're related to equi to equity. Um, I think proms have to be part of our focus as well. And note of their expense. Yeah. And I'll just add one other layer. So the digital component, um, I was really struck by Eric's comment that 20 years ago he was working on the digital future measurement. <laughs> but um, he called out some really interesting trends that are uh, things that have moved that are available now that are important to consider, like AI and NLP and fire and really getting electronic yes. health record <laughs> vendors to collaborate and come together. 
um, and to really think about um, the other theme that came forward is dashboards, visualizations, things that really help providers and systems to understand the data that we do have and be motivated by it rather than punished. And then also the opportunity to capture data um, from publicly available sources to help drive change like Google, which I thought was really interesting um, to integrate with um, accessible and easy data. So that's the only other comments I would make. Lindsay. Yeah, I'll, I'll build. I think a lot of a, a lot of good things have been shared already. I think building on what Lauren called out um, and picking up a little bit on what Vivek shared. Um, it sounds like the current claims based measures won't suffice. We need more. We need to decrease the cost of reporting, decrease the cost of development and rely on digital quality measures or, or the like to help with some of it. Um, it's not necessarily uh, gonna just come automatically that clinicians know how to succeed in these measures. And there's some degree of education that would need to be provided as we think about going down this path. So um, I think I would just build that as we need to, as we think about the all the new measures that would be needed here, there's gonna be a whole layering of education needed for clinicians to understand these measures as well. Um, a couple, the last point I wrote down that hadn't been said yet already is just, um, and I think this surfaced in our special, specialty integration conversation is how many gaps there are in measures still um, in the specialty care space um, and specifically in measures that could link specialties back to primary care as opposed to being standalone measures. So it seems that that remains an opportunity as we think about total cost of care measures. Great comments. So, Alder, anything else that we need to cover? Anything you want to comment? I'm not sure if, if Josh is online. He's not. He's not. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good. All right. Well, good. I want to thank everybody for participating today, our expert presenters, panelists, my PTAC colleagues, and those listening in. We'll be back tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Uh, our two-day agenda will feature, or day two agenda will feature a roundtable uh, panel discussion with experts on stakeholder perspectives on best practices for measuring spending and quality outcomes in total cost of care models, a special panel discussion with CMS staff tomorrow, a listening session on linking performance measures with payment and financial incentives, as well as time for public comments in person or via telephone. We hope that everybody will be able to join us then. Thank you. And for this day, the meeting is adjourned. Produced by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services.